Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a new kind of uh, experimental uh, version of Sleep With Me we've never done before. So welcome. These are just bedtime stories from our podcast, Sleep With Me. And make them feel fresh. These ones are from a couple years ago. Uh, so, so, so if you're a regular listener, you might get a refresh. And if you're new, these are just bedtime stories uh, from a show called Sleep With Me. They're strange, they're meandering, they're a little bit different. And all this is made possible by listeners like you, regular listeners like you. And so I just want to let you know, that's how we're able to put the show out. And uh, so if you uh, are a fan of Sleep With Me, you listen to it on a regular basis, please consider supporting the show. You get ad-free episodes, you get ad-free story-only episodes, tons of other cool stuff at Sleep With Me Plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. But if you're in a position and you have some money every month or you say, hey, maybe I don't watch that streaming service, I'd rather give it to a podcast. Think about your favorite podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me and support that podcast. If it is Sleep With Me, I can support the show, be great. But if it isn't or there's a podcast you listen to, way more, brings you a lot of value during the day. Please support that podcast. Podcast is going through a different time right now. And your favorite podcast, uh, the one you get the most out of, uh, could use your support the most. Uh, so consider supporting it however they request support. Uh, just check it out, like listen to the show or check out their website. Or consider supporting Sleep With Me. If the if Sleep With Me, you say, oh, no, Sleep With Me is the one I listen to the most. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Thanks. Friends beyond the binary, uh, here I am to plant a seed. Uh, how come they don't say bury a seed? Uh, you say plant a seed, right? Uh, is there a difference? You say, is it like, uh, I mean, you say, man, that seed's coming like, uh, place the seed under the dirt. That's another way you could say it. Uh, uh, give a seed some place under the ground, uh, or on, you know, in a lay a seed in a bed of dirt. How about that? And I hope I can lay your thoughts aside so you can get into your bed. And since I don't know what's this probably isn't the summertime of year, so you don't have to worry about brushing that sand out of there. So, so, so tucking you in with stuff that doesn't, if you say, what is this person talking about? You're maybe in the right place because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And here's a couple of ways we're able to bring it to you for free twice a week. And thank you so much, my patron peeps. And I may have forgotten to say, uh, friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So I just said it again, just in case. Uh, uh, all right, Scoots, take it away. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. This is a quick message here. Uh, if you get a lot out of sleep with me, if you're a regular listener, you like these new things we're trying out, like the story-only version of the show. If you're new, don't worry about any of this. But if you're a regular listener of Sleep With Me or you're a regular listener of any podcast, if you have a favorite podcast uh, and it's not Sleep With Me, that's totally cool. If you have podcasts you listen to way more or you get way more value out of, I totally understand that. Consider supporting that podcast. Uh, podcasting is an industry is kind of going through a weird phase right now. It's direct support from listeners is going to be, it seems like it's going to be the future of most shows. And so consider supporting the podcast you really love, and uh, you could do that. You could find out. You could listen, listen to the show, and see how they ask to be supported, um, and or reach out to them. And say, hey, how can I support you? Or if you can't afford, uh, you know, a few dollars a month, you say, hey, how else can I support you? But if Sleep with Me is the one, you, Sleep with Me Plus is the best way to support Sleep with Me. Sign up for Sleep with Me Plus. Not only you get an unbelievable, sweet, different ways to listen to the show. But it's a huge help uh, for us to be able to do stuff like this. Uh, but, yeah, think about what your favorite podcast is and then go ahead and go to their website or, or if you already know how, how they like to be supported, support that show. Uh, thanks and good night. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time for another episode of uh, another, um, what is this, an episodically modular, but another episode of Spice Friends, our episodically modular series with seriality. But you can listen to it in any order because I'm going to catch you up right now on most of it. But also this one, a little spoiler, part of the story will be catching you up too. But I'll catch you up on everything. So if this is your first episode, don't worry. 
Uh, I'm going to tuck in here, and then I'm going to tuck in again. So Spice Friends is a tale of a world just like ours, maybe a little bit in the future, and or maybe say, and maybe say, whoa, wait, that wasn't fiction, I guess, uh, where at some point during the history of a hum, human beings, we discovered there was these big, what you would call maybe titans, Sometimes there was uh, gorillas, sometimes there was like dinosaur types or moth type, uh, giant beings, right? And they would walk around, sometimes they would step on cars and stuff, knock over power lines and more, and they would yell and stuff like that. And it was very intrusive, obviously, on our way of life. And the humanity as a whole, tried to, at first we were, oh, wait a second, it's something about those materials we have that have half-lives, uh, especially the ones we use offensively, that get their attention. So they got all the big ones on a big, like an atoll, big ones atoll, right? Uh, that worked for a while, but then people, you know, and there was treaties and stuff, they said no more offensive half-life, and then they said, well, we're using it for power, and then the big one said, wait a second, you're using it for, you're, you know, you're not being honest. Uh, so then they returned and they started stepping on stuff again. This was when we had President Smith and President Smith's daughter, President, Vice President Smith. And I think during sometime during the history, they also got in touch with some planet called Planet Zipper. Not a lot of details in this show about this uh, so you just kind of kind of roll with it. I didn't get, there's not a lot of memorandums I was able to page through. But they sent this this team of astronauts to Planet Zipper. And Planet Zipper said, hey, we got some solutions. We'll send us some astronauts. We'll teach them. And they said, we're also working on something. But meanwhile, President Smith had to, like, take action because one of the big dinosaur ones uh, came over and was messing everything up. And President Smith tried a bunch of things. Finally, President Smith, they had some sort of serum. Maybe it was from Planet Zipper. Not important, I don't think, right now for me to remember where the serum was from. Or Ray or something. I don't know. But President Smith turned into a big one, lured the big ones to big ones atoll. Oh, I guess it was from Planet Zipper because then Planet Zipper used to this big uh, beam or something to uh, cause all of Earth to go into hibernation for a time. And your hibernation would wear off, I guess, based on size. So the big ones were the last ones to wake up. And by the time they woke up, that's where our story kind of started. They were getting ready to wake up. The, a the astronauts were supposed to come back. Only one astronaut returned. And they said, okay, we have a solution for the big ones when they wake up. And they, the president, now President Smith had gone away, dealt with it. Time had passed. I'm talking probably decades. And Vice President Smith, who had left politics but had returned, because the, the way politics worked had changed in that time. You know, after mass hibernation and then waiting around for giant beings to get woken back up, it, you know, people can't change their priorities. But Vice President Smith had become president of the world, which really just meant president or chairperson or something of uh, the collective nation, CN. So she was working with this astronaut, and, and they, they, she, she said, we follow all the plans you set, but it was like children's programming and... Uh, and the astronaut basically said, yep, we're going to do this kind of positive uh, joy through song and dance and, you know, dealing with seeing your feelings and feeling your feelings. And that's going to manifest a solution to these big ones. And the president's vice, no, President Smith said, I'm the president of the world. Uh, this is not, doesn't sound like... Uh, there's no, you know, how's this going to work? It doesn't, this is a, a bit foo-foo, I would say. And the astronaut said, well, this is the solution I've come with. Uh, can you trust me? And President Smith said, well, I can trust you mostly. And so they moved forward with this plan, which actually worked, creating through song and dance and children's programming, mostly, and really uh, leaning in, it would manifest these spice friends, which were giant spice-based beings, uh, and thus far, they've helped mitigate some of the big ones. 
uh, moth breath, uh, bog, bog, boggy or something, some sort of bog, giant bog being. I don't know. There was another, there was a, one other one, I think, or two other ones. I'm not even sure. Oh, no, no. There was a garlic spice friend that helped, uh, and there was a cinnamon spice. So they helped make things better. And, uh, they were still trying the president and the astronaut and their team of children's programming, exec, not exact creatives and executives, I guess. Uh, I don't think you're an executive though. It's cause it's like, you're working for like some sort of, uh, you know, you're actually, I wouldn't see your bureaucrat. Uh, I wonder if they had any wonks, policy wonks. I don't know what even that means, but I just say, huh, that's interesting. Any gad, I wonder if they had any gadflies. Oh, this is not the time to, my brain just said, this isn't the time to ponder those questions. But so they were working with, trying to create these spice friends to deal with the um, big ones. Now, meanwhile, the collective nations were trying to work together, but there was other, you know, city states and people, oligarchs, you know, whole nine yards, just like, uh, you know, you hear about in the great uh, boring tales that sleep with me. And they had their own agendas, and there was a lot of stuff going on. And some people just wanted a clear-cut solution, just like the president did. He said, what? You're going to—because no one knew about it. They just knew the Spice Friends would appear every once in a while. So they were looking for a more clear-cut solution. President Smith, uh, she intervened, though. But it ended up the Big Ones Atoll went away, and the Big Ones separated, left the Big Ones Atoll and spread out across the world. And I like we'll find out, I guess, coming up here. I know I can tell you this that, that just like Willow says, uh, uh, all will be well. So that's, uh, I guess, without further ado, uh, here's another episode of uh, Spice Friends. And here's our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, as a boy says, a girl's is time. to join us in another tale of Spice Friends. Spicy. Yeah. Thanks. That's Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, now, Antonio and I, I, I guess uh, we're going to, um, if he can remain silent for the next, uh, like, 70 minutes without, because another thing I notice is your hair makes a noise now. Now that you've, like, your smile, you've learned to control the twinkling of your smile and whatever that spiritual joy that comes out of the inside of you or whatever, I've noticed your hair also makes a sound. It doesn't sound the exact, it sounds like if, like if there was icicles in heaven and someone had a, some sort of magical drumstick or something and they ran across, they were playing icicles as an instrument, not on earth though, because on earth it would just probably sound like clump. Your hair makes a sound like that. I'm pretty sure I'm hearing it. Uh, it's very faint, uh, probably because it's coming. I don't know if that's what heaven does. If there's a heaven and they're watching your hair, this is probably what happens. Maybe I'll just get you a hairnet. Oh no, I have one next to my bed for you. That was my way of indirectly introducing that now you have to wear a hairnet, Antonio. But I'm pretty sure what's happening is heaven is watching your hair and there's some sort of angel or I don't know, I, I, I guess it would be a sprite uh, or a nymph. Uh, and when they see your hair move, they like start playing icicles, uh, like not like a xylophone because most of them are higher pitched and heavenly sounding. And my mic picks, at least it, my, my ear, my, I can hear it and it's distracting. So that's why you have to wear hair nets. Uh, and that is how all drives all the way from LA now wearing a hairnet uh, and lying in my bed with those booties on, on top of a comforter I put on top of my comforter, uh, and not moving at all, except, you know, what's necessary, uh, is Mr. Our Hollywood announcer. We're always grateful the Mr. Antonio Banderas. Thank you so much. And this is Spice Friends. Thanks everybody. Okay, Madam President, uh, this has been a while since we've, uh, I mean, I, I, I haven't heard any recordings from you, and it's been quite a while since I've done any recordings. Uh, we're here 
I guess what I believe, I believe we're at a turning point. And I have no idea when the last recording I made it was. Uh, that was because we got busy. We're working very closely together. And I guess I didn't realize the benefit of making these recordings until we reached a a point where we're at a turning point, but we're spinning around and around and around, and then we're stumbling like uh, like when you put your head on the pole kind of thing, and then you say, no, go back to the circle, spin around again, which, where are you turning to? I don't know if that's the correct metaphor, but so... How do I catch up if you're listening to this and you say, where are we and how did we get here? Well, I have no idea how much time elapsed. Uh, I'd have to, I'd really, so I guess that's not as important as what has happened since then. We got you back after your trip to Big Ones Island and flying around on a kefir lime leaf on the back of a, a, like a flying feathered friend or not friend or whatever, big ones, atoll, uh, sunk uh, beneath the sea. I believe uh, the Kefir Limeleaf and uh, Longfeather uh, headed below the sea to a sea vent that you instructed them. The rest of the big ones left big ones, atoll, uh, and spread out across the globe eventually. And that was not popular... For, well, I guess not popular. How do we define popular? Your choice received a lot of scrutiny. And you, understandably, as a leader, uh, were willing to be the projection, you know, have that choice projected on you. Uh, we were able to uh, find, you know, give people a choice, that, have people deal with the consequences of how they dealt with you within our, your administration, our administration, our teams. Okay, so, well, but what happened? So the big ones, I was trying to say, could I do this in a way that uh, gets to the point? But this is how we think things out, you and I, or one of the ways we've discovered it. So the big ones spread out across the globe slowly, and the globe had strong feelings about it. And first, they were kind of searching for remnants of that element uh, that you had fed them that powered the device that was supposed to change the movement of the tectonic plates. And luckily, large, the, the, we were able to move, you know, work with the entire planet uh, for a while and uh, the relocate the processed parts of that element uh, to uh, isolated areas. And uh, so first the big ones spread out, and we reacted, and they went to these isolated areas. Now, n no area is totally isolated, so we also had to work on some humanitarian work and uh, re relocate people, well, hopefully temporarily, and again, that was an opportunity for for some, for, for us and for other people, it was either an opportunity or not an opportunity. And I don't, you know, I guess part of me is used to think that was like a 40, you know, 40, 40, 20. Yeah. 40 percent of the people were like, OK, like uh, this is, you know, this change, you know, I didn't expect a big one to show up. uh at our home here, but, uh, I'll have to do my best to, you know, okay, we'll move there. And then 40% of people were very upset and 20% of people said, uh, I'm sorry, what? So, yeah, so there's that, uh, and that was our status. And, you know, everybody was very concerned with what are we going to do about the big ones? I feel like there was a sense of confidence, uh, at least deep down with you and most of our team and the people that believed in your leadership. And I guess if go back to that same idea, I said, this is probably 40% uh, of the collected nations that say, or the cooperative nations, 80, you know, 80% of cooperative nations believed in you and the people and maybe the rest of the world, you know, they didn't, you know, that was 20%. I don't know. But so, 
that big, we could bring the spice friends where we needed them and that we were coming up with a plan to deal with the big ones once these elements uh, were consumed or they were throwing the elements around, all those things. What we didn't quite realize was that uh, while we were trying to come up with a plan in the cooperative nations, uh, many people, you know, a lot of times people come up with an idea and they think they're the first person that thought of it. But sometimes, and in this case, it was all, all it was a synchronicity. Is that the right word of uh, an idea? And a lot of people that had the same idea were people that were used to collecting power or groups that were used to collecting power. For some, it was political power and some was financial power. And uh, the, most of those personality types were people that were used, you'd say, use the word, word strong arm to describe their uh, behavior. It could be uh, a subtle version of that. Uh, but they all had this idea within a few months of each other. What if we brought the big ones? Could could can the big ones be controlled? That was an idea that's always been asked. Uh, what does it mean if a big one comes to our country? What does this element have to do with things? Uh, and so then we reached a period, uh, and that led to us to our turning point where. Uh, the big people started inviting big ones to their countries or drawing them uh, to their countries. And uh, that uh, the big ones seemed, it, it was weird. They seemed to respond and each one responded to a different call. I don't know. I need to take a break now because I just feel like I'm, uh, I'm still spinning around in circles, but I am hoping you're going to leave me a message too, to help me process it. And you're listening, you'll listen to this message and it'll help you process things. Okay. President of the United States recording. I said the United States, uh, is can't get my father out of my mind, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'm recording this message, uh, and uh, you, hopefully you're listening to it, but you, whoever's listening to it, you could take that as uh, you, that you're listening to it. And I'm reviewing things uh, in, uh, here. It's been a while since I've sat down and recorded myself uh, to review things. And quite a lot has changed. I got taken a big one's atoll without my permission my team and I, we had to come up, uh, think on our feet and work with uh, the team here to deal with that situation. Big ones, it's all sunk beneath the earth. The big ones spread out across the globe. First, uh, an unpopulated, low population areas, excuse me, low population areas. Uh, and eventually, how do I say this? Uh, without uh, showing how strongly I feel about it, but uh, certain people with uh, inflated view, strong lead, strong megalo, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, st certain countries and places within countries started trying to attract the big ones there. Uh, thinking they could use them defensively or offensively, thinking of the big ones in some sense as a symbol of their power is still behavior that I do not quite understand and how more than one of these holy mana, all these arcs, uh, there's some, yeah, you have a committee. Oh boy, you have a committee of strong arms. That's great for you attracting the big ones there and now like the big one came and sat down and had some tea with you you could still see the big one walking around you, you i guess this gets into insulation oh well you live in a place that's insulated from the impacts of your actions and so you don't have to deal with the big one walking around uh the low-lying parts of your nation or your your city-state or whatever it was. 
and you could afford to move the elements around. And then we got into this place where at least you were able to listen to reason because at least I knew not to fight you. That in the face of this behavior, I didn't understand. I'd learned from my father, from my mother, and from a lot of other intelligent people to, uh, you know, set aside the people and the problems. Uh, I say, hey, well, there's like people that don't want to be in this nation with a big one stomping around. Um, can 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 you let them leave and and they can come here and and live in one of the the, the, the CN aligned nations? Uh, only if they you know. Uh, and then you said, okay, but what if people want to come live in our place? You know, well, you know, and you had incentives. Uh, and we made agreements. I said, okay, well, we have free passage or what paid passage uh, even if people wanted to leave or wanted to come. And, I mean, again, it was beyond my understanding why a large portion of people, well, I guess it's not, it's beyond my understanding, but I can see it happening and I believe it happened to say, well, yeah, I want to live in that. I like that leader. I like the style. They tell it like it is. And, you know, they have a vision, you know, having a, a giant, uh, whatever that, hawk, chicken hawk or whatever it is, uh, cat. It's a cat, but whatever. Oh, we'll live there. You know, they tell, you know, that's a place where you could be you, uh, and, uh, Say it like it is, or whatever. I I I can't understand it, but I can, I can grasp it. Uh, so that all happened, and one of the pieces of good news, somewhat, was that uh, by giving this ter- your territories to one big one, we guess we didn't quite realize that they were territorial, and that their behavior. Like, and this is, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this because it, it isn't acceptable, we're, but we're adapting to it. It's a, oh, okay, so the big one's behavior did change. Uh, it still it caused chaos and destruction, still unpredictable, but just not as unpredictable or aggro as when we stood in opposition of the big one or tried to hide something from the big one and but that doesn't mean it's okay uh, which is where we're at with these decisions we're trying to enact and, and figure out what to do and what our responsibility is and also longer and midterm what all of you are up to with your big ones uh but it kind of seemed childish in some sense and maybe that's just me and my own issue of uh this behavior, oh, now we have this uh, living titan in our, our, our where we live, and we have a leader who is connected to the titan, and and we can identify with it and wear clothes and, and praise it, uh, like uh, belief systems that are thousands of years old, uh, and now you, I don't know. But in some sense, when God-like beings are, uh, say, didn't wouldn't you say a God-like being behaves with some sort of, uh, I don't know. Those are my things. I, again, this is getting in the way of us reaching where we what we need to do next. But th- that's where we are, or where we thought we were. Is uh, okay. We have the CN nations. We have the things we set in place. Now, no new Spice friends have come forward because, you know, since, you know, there were some Spice friends uh, that we needed since Kafir Lime Leaf, uh, you know, when some of the big ones started leaving. But anyway, no current Spice friends. We do have the ability to consistently... I think we know the process that usually will result in the creation of a spice friend if there is the need to. 
which is uh, the one part that's uh, uh, quite a variable, but the rest of the parts, uh, we know the process, right? It's a process-based process. So there is a little bit less stress, right? And we had this, uh, uh, like, uh, exodus and, and influx of people, and that caused some changes and some strong feelings here and, and in other places. And again, under my leadership and the, with the leaders I work with, uh, we've, you know, we've, we've taken accountability for our actions and tried to do, make the best decisions we can for everyone that we can make those decisions for and with. And trying to, to, to adjust and say, okay, well, this is where you've settled or this is where, you know, this, these are the places we can, can house you. This is our plan, or why don't you take part in the process? And what's uh, this is kind of uh, where the setup is, is that most of the people that chose to leave these big, big one, I forgot the term you were saying, big one affiliated nations or something, but uh, it, it, they're, they were involved, they chose to come, and, and they cho- so they have been very involved, uh, and in a good way. And that kind of was a distraction between, so you have the people that seem happy with this one way of uh, being in a big one, big one dominated area. And then you have the people that wanted to get away from that. But what we were distracted from was the people in between I don't know if that's the right word. They use a word apathy sometimes, but I don't think that's an apt description of it. It was people, I don't know if we forgot them as so much as uh, that we missed an entire layer of people that are being impacted by the behavior of the big ones that... uh, Again, a behavior I can't quite understand. And so, I don't know. I think I should listen to whatever you, you've, you've recorded to, to before I can I can even parse out what we should even do. And I don't know. And it's just it's anniversary is coming up and it has me distracted too. So I think that's a part of it. So I'm going to take a break here. Okay, Madam President, uh, you know, I listened to your recording, and, you know, we've kind of talked about it, too. So, and you, as a leader and and as a person that's wired for leadership and, and has a heart for leadership and the mind and the spirit and the soul for leadership, uh, you want to prepare and control what you can control, right? Uh, because you see these big one nations, and that's the term bonds. Uh, you, you forget uh, bond bonds. We would joke about, uh, but you see them as eventually becoming an offensive thing, and uh, that that's where we need to focus our attention. That either. We have to be prepared defensively or create spice friends to lure the big ones out of the big bonds and uh, and deal with them. But I, I guess I have been adamant, and I know your heart's been adamant too, about uh, those people have chosen not to act, uh, who have said they don't care or they just want to stay. They won't want to be bothered, uh, even though the big ones are bothering them. Uh, that, uh, it is confusing. They won't leave, uh, they're, but they're not exactly happy with the circumstances who could be. And, uh, you know, I pitched, I I pitched you and you went through with multiple failures, uh, that I was behind, you know, that I, and, you know, some of our team proposed, because no one voted, I guess, is the thing. We had a public vote that we got the bonds to agree to and said, hey, you could make a public vote. Do you want to stay? You know, the 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 exodus was a part of that, but that was more voting with your feet. But this one said, hey, just vote. Uh, 
and then we'll you know we'll arrange for you to exit or enter and again we, we you know i think more people left uh the cn but it wasn't a large number of people so then we said okay we'll do a secret vote and if you're concerned for some reason i mean what's amazing is i guess because of the bonds uh, consider themselves in such a strong position it, that, that they don't really care if you stay or go or maybe there's some other more insidious layer that they know you're not going to act. I don't know. But so they had this a secret vote, right? Uh, and uh, that didn't do anything. We tried different ones. We said, okay, so you don't want to vote by the electronically. Well, let's fly a flag. Okay, well, that's where you live. Okay. You know, send us, you know, message. It. We didn't do a message in a bottle. That was on the idea board, though. So none of that worked. Uh, and, of course, we came back to the fact, uh, and actually it was you that said it, why don't they just vote with their hearts, that, but they're not vote. You know, that's where you, you got very strong. You said uh, they're not going to vote with their hearts. Their hearts aren't voting is the thing. To see the people here that, you know, that, that chose to go there, chose to come here, they voted with their feet, but their hearts were in it. uh so they can't vote with their hearts. So what do we do? And again, another thing of, of unsuccess. Uh, we tried some programming and, and to put on some shows uh, and uh, using the Spice Friends and the big emojis and, and everything we had, all our characters, uh, to teach people how to vote with their hearts. Uh, but I think because our intention was ahead of our actions or something that, uh, it, it, or what response did we have? Uh, and again, this is baffling. I, I understand it because I feel that way inside sometimes too, wanting to lie down. And, uh, it's something inside me, right? But there was just nothing, uh, nothing doing. And again, there was more, you know, the big ones were still walking around and then people being kind of, uh, I don't know, didn't know that you really talked about this in the recording, but having to work serving the big ones, uh, in these bonds, uh, and people still not saying, okay, so your job now is to bring food to the big one or you had to leave where you lived and move somewhere else so the big one could just lie down on that uh, side of that hill. And it was tense and, and it really, really not a lot of uh, seeing eye to eye because uh, it just we, no one knew what to do. It's, uh, and it's exasperating, right? Uh, we tried everything, but I guess we tried from the wrong direction because uh, it was you that said it. Uh, at first, you said it to me. You said there's something getting in the way of us getting to the answer of how to do this. Uh, why don't you look at what's bothering you? But like any good leader, any real leader, you did it first for yourself, Uh and that's why I have so much respect for you and, and why I have confidence. Uh, I have hope. You know, I brought, I tried to bring hope to you, but you sparked the hope within me. Uh, I, I guess uh, I, I need to, hopefully you're listening to this and uh, we're finding a way to move forward as you move forward with what's going on with you. President of the Collective Nations, uh, recording again. Okay, so I don't remember the last thing I was talking about. Uh, I know we've had some conversations since then. But where we're at, what the turning point is, maybe I should define that, is uh, by, what you would call bystanders. Uh, people without a, that have no side, or they maybe they would describe themselves. They say, well, I don't want to get involved. Uh, I don't have a side. Uh, they're living a big one's nation, but they're not aligned with the big one. But they say, well, this is where I, this is what happened. These are the circumstances. Uh, 
And we say, well, we want to take you out. Well, what if we don't want to go? Okay, well, what do you want to be? What, like, what's our responsibility to those people? And then the idea that we were trying to get people to vote and trying to get them to do what we thought they should do. And that just didn't work. Uh, this head on bumping and bumping and bumping. And it was you that said, uh, this is, you know, maybe we have to soften the seed before we plant it. Uh, and would it, you know, and then I said, okay, well, the, you said it was my idea, but it, I think it was your idea. And I said, you're right. What is the seed that I can't even let be planted within me? I mean, I know what it, one of them among many, you know, it was very, very frustrated. But when I started to try to put myself there and say, how am I like that? Uh, how can I, like, when am I resistant? Uh, I'm vulnerable, but I, I feel vulnerable. And they said, oh, this stuff with my dad. Uh, and uh, I've got to work through that. Uh, and think about, you know, how, what I'm angry about, what I haven't grieved about, and what I'm powerless over and what I'm sad about and balance those things with, uh, being in the present moment and, and dealing with life, taking action. What, what, what do you do? And uh, I said, well, I guess I know what to do now is to work with you and work through it and, and through this process and work through it in, in the eyes of children with the children I mean, now it's a lot younger when, uh, you know, my father had to make really hard choices uh, to, to, to keep people safe from the big ones. And here I am trying to create a safe place, uh, and I have to help myself uh, through song and dance and joy, work through those feelings, let them be there, let myself be sad. Let myself be mad. Let myself be a person with feelings uh, that are real and legitimate. And again, not worrying about what, like, uh, I don't know, just experiencing that. And I guess it's funny as an aside is uh, if there was another world where none of this ever happened but this show, it could have changed everything too, you know? Maybe or maybe I may, or would we be like those people just uh, watching the big ones out their window and saying, well, oh, bummer. Here I am, and there they go. Hope that my house isn't the one they sit on today. Uh, or would, I don't know. That's too much of a speculation, but... So while I've been talking about this, uh, you know, we've been in, while we've been working, where I've been working through my feelings, uh, we also maybe came up with, the, the, we're about to see if this is going to work. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam President, uh, for all of your input and your inspiration and your vulnerability. Watching you... I've just learned so much just from watching you uh, be willing to, to, to try and to try to have hope uh, that these things will work and that these things can be worked through. And that's kind of what inspired that, uh, this uh, thing of the cumin seed, right? Uh, and uh, the great uh, cumin spice, it's hard for me to say, but the uh, great cumin Spice Friend Giveaway was what I first called it, but then you said Cumin Cuties. And I said, Cumin Cutie. Cumin Cutie. And I said, you said, yeah, they could laugh about that on the playground too, but it's Cumin Cutie. And I said, Cumin Cuties. Uh, cute Cumin Cuties. Uh, and you said, just Cumin Cuties. A great Cumin Cutie giveaway. It's, it's some sense of vote. Uh, if you wanted a free, well, you know, we started the cumin programming with the cumin cuties. Uh, 
They were Spice Friends. They were singers. Uh, they were full of song and dance and joy. But they were made up, uh, instead of being just one s- spice, they were a collection of se- cumin seeds. Uh, and we talked and we said, well, this could be something, uh, you know, with the magnetized, not real seeds uh, for the toys, but uh, that are bendable and shapeable and danceable. And uh, then we said, okay, what if people could get these for free anywhere in the world? Uh, bond nation, you know, in the bonds or in the CNs? Uh, what if uh, you could just order and sign up and we'd send you a human cutie of your own? That would be a way to vote with your heart uh, for a friend uh, to play with. And uh, it worked. Uh, and and it, it was the best part was uh, with all the newcomers to the CN and everybody that is involved uh, gave people more things to be engaged and involved with, uh, helping make these toys, these gifts to give away, to give away, you know, you were working on them for the people in your community that wanted them and across the world. You were involved in it. You were watching it. Uh, families were working on it. We had a, a cause to work together on. And it's been beautiful to witness. Uh, and, of course, the human cuties, they are cute. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they've just been, oh, boy. And all the, the, all the possibilities the creative team has been able to come up with, uh, so impressive. But uh, that was also when we became aware of a change in, in one of the big ones uh, right here in, uh, you know, the former United States on the other side of the Rockies, the hairy ape, uh, and some of the observations that have been going on. And uh, one of the teams saying, you know, I've been observing the hairy ape uh, and it's my belief they've been changing in size. Uh, and we said, oh, like, and no, not changing and getting smaller, but getting larger in that this person said, and uh, not just larger in a slow, consistent way, but in a progressively larger way. And you, you said, well, it's a time to take action because it was also a part of this giveaway did trigger some change in in those countries, uh, in those places uh, where people said, you know what, I, I get like uh, could be a part of the, uh, you know, the oh the Cuban Cutie Crew, you called it. Uh, that was their their the so people that worked on making the Cuban Cuties called themselves, and people in the bonds started to say, hey, I want to leave. Uh, I want to be in the human cutie crew. And for, for a time, the, the bond leaders, say uh, they didn't care because they had the people that wanted to be there that were engaged uh, in their ruler, ruling and uh, praising their big ones. Uh, and I don't know if this is what's related to the growth in the big hairy ape, uh, but uh, it's not good. And then the nation's, you know, bonds said, no, 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 no more leaving, particularly here on the other side of the Rockies, uh, the middle. I don't even know. So, you know, that's where I grew up uh, in the Great Plains. So that's why, you know, it, it, my heart is heavy thinking about it. Uh, that every, So, okay. So now we've, in, I, I guess, Madam President, I, I guess I'll wait to see. You know, we're about to try to send, to, to create a, a human cutie of our own, a spice friend, and, and, and follow our protocols. Uh, and actually using what you used to heal some of your feelings with your father and your mother and your siblings, uh, so let's see how it goes. I'll be, be talking to you in a second. 
Okay, this is a present of the Collective Nations uh, recording, and uh, okay, um, well, this, uh, you filled uh, me in on the Cumin Cuties, which was a success, and you taught me to kind of express and, and uh, work through my feelings and feel my feelings, and then we played that out uh, to a larger audience uh, on a consistent basis. And we had a human cutie, just one, but a human cutie. Uh, and it appeared uh, on our side of the Rockies or on, you know, our, our, well, yeah. And it was cute. It was a human cutie. It was singing. It was walking. It could reshape itself. Very playful. But it also knew it had to go deal with the hairy ape uh, who had grown and, and was acting more chaotic. Uh, but now they'd closed to the borders there and wouldn't let anybody leave. And, and uh, uh, it, was, it was time for a change. Uh, and the human cutie headed through the Rockies. Uh, and, uh, the hairy, big hairy ape was waiting and eventually they started to dance in a sense, uh, especially since the human cutie was uh, singing. And, and that was when we got our first glimpse of how large the hairy ape had grown to be the big hairy ape, even though it was big to begin with. And that it was much larger than the cumin, cu, 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 even I, I guess now I'm saying it like you, but our cumin friend, cumin, this, cumin it's cumin cutie. I, I want to say cumin spice friend, but it's cumin cutie. And at first the dancing or whatever you want to call it, uh, offensive dancing, defensive dancing, uh, it seemed like it could go either way because of the ability of the seeds to reformulate themselves. Uh, it kind of offset the uh, offset the size advantage of the big hairy ape, uh, but it went on for a while, and it went on in a way that, uh, you know, there was just swaths of people impacted by the dancing, and, and it went on for for some time, with only some breaks, and and we tried to keep inspiring song and dance in people's hearts and people around the world using their human cuties. Uh, to express their feelings and work through their feelings, not all of them good feelings, or you what you would uh, choose is good. And I remember you showing me that wheel of feelings and saying, you know, when you were ta talking to me, or I was talking to you about where I felt blocked with uh, my sadness, and that there was this one thing on the wheel I noticed, pensive I can't remember it now, but pensive, sad, and, and grieving. And on the other side of it was uh, service and joy, I think. And that that was the spirit of the human cutie, right? And I, I guess I don't know. I'm distracted now because uh, so the human cutie and the big hairy ape, they went back and forth. And eventually... I guess when you say big hairy ape, it sounds uh, a little bit uh, not nice, but this big hairy ape uh, was also keen and always learning. And I, I think at the time we were assuming that was not the case. And so at some point, the big hairy ape uh, got figured out that one had a size advantage, uh, and two, that the human cutie was made up of, uh, that its advantage, uh, was also a disadvantage that was made from collective seeds. And we didn't even notice it at first, uh, that, uh, the big hairy ape would have a, a back and forth, a dance off, uh, but each time, and then it would retreat off and rest. And it was acting like it, uh, it stubbed its toe or something and it needed to get away but really is grabbing small handfuls of cumin seeds, uh, taking them out and burying them or throwing them in the rivers. Uh, uh, and it wasn't for a few days that we noticed the cumin cutie was getting smaller and smaller. 
and then much to our chagrin, smaller and smaller and smaller, even after we realized it. And at first, that uh, seemed like it was going to be uh, a giant problem, right? The cumin and cutie kept getting smaller and smaller, but it never stopped. Uh, and eventually, it never it got to the size that it was still very large because of the huge size of the big hairy ape. But next to the big hairy ape, it looked like a little toy. And the big hairy ape started picking it up and, and holding it and... Uh, in a somewhat way that, at least for me, felt uh, evocative of how the big one nations were being run. Uh, it was patronizing way. It was uh, a paternal, but not a loving paternal way. It was a way like a B-U-L-L-Y in a sense, and... Those images were playing out everywhere, and our reaction with the creative team and, and you kind of leading them was to say, okay, people are going to have strong feelings about this. Let's, uh, what can we do that's the opposite of that? And, and again, with the human cutie being so beloved uh, and trying to understand that, again, another behavior that's not quite understandable, but we have feelings about and more and more people, but I think the fact that so many people also had this joy and service connected to it, uh, that uh, something totally unexpected happened, which was that uh, one night all of the human cuties, uh, and I think that more and more people, we started to get more and more orders during this time. They were still free. You could still order them, and we were still using means to sneak the big one, human cuties into the big one's nations, or people were giving them to their neighbors to use. People were posting ways to make your own human cutie. And uh, that uh, the human cuties started uh, talking to people, like, uh, and calming them, uh, interacting, I guess... uh, just a little bit, uh, uh, that they were, uh, I don't think, it, it, again, we still don't understand it because it's not happening anymore, but, uh, that they didn't come to life, uh, as so much as communicate a message somehow. And then what did people do? But they took their human cuties outside, uh, even if they weren't in the the in, in the Midwest, uh, former Midwest, uh, the plains, uh, they uh, they um, took their cumin cuties outside and played with them in a in a fun way, and danced with them with joy, and with the knowledge that this cumin cutie came from service from someone else uh, giving it to them. There was some remnant of that interaction. Like in the heart, in the hearts of the people, I guess somehow, and somehow that changed how the the big hairy apes started to deal with their human cutie, and that the the big hairy ape uh, it, it must have witnessed it, but it must have felt it as well, and the big hairy ape started to get smaller and smaller and smaller too. Now. Still uh, fairly large in size, but took its human cutie and, and headed off uh, to a, to an isolated part of the Rockies, and 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 uh, seems to have burrowed in, uh, just playing joyfully with its toy. And I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means for the rest of the big ones, nations, uh, the other big ones. Uh, but I do know that uh, there is this new awakening that I can feel of people saying, oh, wait, I would like a little bit more of that joy. Can I get it through this service? Can I get it through these feelings? Can I get it through the song and dance? Uh, can I get it by playing with this human cutie? I don't know. Maybe I'll try. So I'm in a place now where it's like, I don't know what we're going to try next. Uh, 
but I hope I stay willing to try uh, to, to solve things. And then as long as I can, I can help uh, lead us uh, uh, to the next stage uh, that we have to, to cover. Uh, so I got to get some rest. I hope you're resting too, astronauts. Uh, and I know we'll talk soon. Uh, good night. All right, I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently and say thanks, thanks, and good night to uh, Andrew, Sarah, and Christy. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Amy, Mike, and Lori. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Valerie, Gretchen, and Lynn. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Pete, Christine, and Michelle. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Joe, Lisa, and Casey. Thank you, thanks, and good thanks, and night to Amelia, Aaron, and Mary. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and night to Brian, Kathy, and Arlene. Thanks, thanks, and night to Alexi, Levels, and Stephanie. Thanks, thanks, and night, everybody. Uh, Sleep the Existed Free Podcast can be able to support the show directly on Patreon or uh, support our sponsors. That's how we come out twice a week for free. We grow as a podcast. You could join our referral program, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Or you can um, uh, just spread the word about podcasting in general, like soft sell. Just say, hey, man, like I love podcasts. Uh, this is the app I use. If you're talking, I don't know, depending on who you're talking to, I don't know. Uh, but that helps everybody. You feel good. They discovered podcasts and then the podcasts that they end up listening to. So I appreciate it because uh, I love podcasts. And, um, yeah, um, here's a couple Talk You In sponsors that have enabled us to add that over 400 episodes into the free feed. Thanks and good night. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots with, uh, like, a Tuck You In uh, message here for our Bedtime Story podcast. Uh, we're trying out, uh, and I kind of said this, you know, free way to support Sleep With Me and Bedtime Stories from Sleep With Me is join our referral program sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. You get rewarded for introducing people to free version of Sleep With Me, including access to Sleep With Me Plus. Uh, but the, most of all, just think about what your favorite podcast is or one of your favorite podcasts, uh, and then support that podcast. It doesn't have to be Sleep With Me, but just to support your favorite podcast uh, because they could use your support right now. Uh, and if you decide, oh, Sleep With Me is actually my favorite podcast. Well, the, wow, uh, blushing, seriously, uh, even though it's imaginary here in this context. And support it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus or listen to the show you love and, and see how they want to be supported. Thanks.